the past three years, I have bought over 120 bottles of fragrances. That sounds ridiculous even saying out loud, but I've worked out, out of these 120 bottles, my 30 favorite fragrances, and I'm going to be ranking these 30 from worst all the way down to best. Let's go. At number 30 is a fragrance that I talked about on TikTok pretty much every single video for around six months, and that is Mont Blanc Legend Spirit. Now, a lot of people, they would see my collection and not think for a second that something like this would be on there, but it just holds so much nostalgia to me. I wore this five to six times a week, literally every time I went to the gym. It's fresh, clean, a little bit sweet. There's just something so simple yet addictive about this. If you have around a $30 budget and just want a cheap, fresh fragrance, there's not one that I can recommend more than Mont Blanc Legend Spirit, and that's why it's on this list. In at number 29 is Valentino Coral Fancy. When I first bought this, I wasn't the biggest fan, but I really like how complex this is for a Valentino fragrance. Tobacco, it's a little bit fruity. I really love my tobacco fragrances. I think if you want something mass appealing that pretty much everyone will like, but it also won't get boring super, super quickly, check out Valentino Coral Fancy. I think it deserves to be in this top 30 list. At number 28 is a fragrance that I think is criminally underrated, and that is Rasasi Howes Ice. Not the original Rasasi Howes. It is honestly around 80% similar, but it adds a mint note. It's slightly more aquatic. I like to think of Rasasi Howes Ice as kind of the grown man's, grown man's version of Rasasi Howes. It doesn't smell as youthful. It's not quite as synthetic. The performance on this stuff as well is a lot better than the 2024 original Rasasi Howes batches. I think this stuff is great. If you want a cheap, freshy, but you have a budget of around 60, 70, 80 bucks, check this one out. One Million Lucky, my favorite one million fragrance to this day. Nutty, caramel, popcorn type of vibe. It's so sweet. It's so sexy. I can imagine this being a big compliment magnet. Performance isn't the best. That's why it's not higher up. It has also been officially discontinued for months now. And, you know, fragrances that aren't widely accessible, I'm not going to want to pull it up too high on this list. But I still really enjoy it. It definitely deserves to be on here, and I had to mention it. This and One Million Elixir, honestly, could both be on this list. I just don't own One Million Elixir. But One Million Lucky, if you can get your hands on it for a reasonable price, I still definitely recommend this stuff. In at number 26 is YSLY EDP. Even mentioning this now, I'm wondering why this isn't higher up, because this is one of my favorite designer fragrances of all time. It kind of replaced... Mont Blanc Legend Spirit as my gym scent just because I think it smells a little bit higher quality. The blend is a bit better. Obviously, it costs more, but I think if you're after a first fragrance as a young man and you want to spend money on something high quality that is essentially a timeless smell, look no further than YSLY EDP. It was my best friend's first fragrance and he still wears it to this day. He's gone through two bottles of it, I think now. And I mean, that says it all. This stuff is great. I would give it around an 8.5 out of 10. Definitely deserves to be on this list. And honestly, thinking about it now, I'm surprised it's not higher up. At number 25, we've got Hugo Boss, the scent elixir. This stuff is another criminally, criminally underrated fragrance. Hugo Boss has been releasing a lot of new fragrances, so I feel like maybe this one kind of got lost in all of their new releases. It gives off Azaro the most wanted EDP vibe. Strong with you, absolutely vibe. Strong with you, intensely vibe. Sweet, sexy. This one is a little bit more mature than those big, you know, youthful kind of designer releases like the Azara I was talking about. It's very, very good. If you're maybe 25 to 30 and you want a going out partying fragrance that will pull you a lot of compliments, the performance is very strong. Check out this underrated gem. Also, a lot of people won't be, won't have heard of this fragrance. It's very unlikely you'll run into someone else wearing it. So that will help you stand out and be unique. Definitely deserves to be on this top 30 list. And I think we need to start talking about this fragrance more. Making its way to number 24, we have Replica Jazz Club. By far the best replica fragrance in my opinion. By the fireplace would be a close second. But man, this stuff is just in a league of its own. You get tobacco, very vanilla heavy. It does kind of have that little edgy, juvenile type smell to it, which I absolutely love. When I first smelled this on a, you know, spray card, I thought it was terrible. But on my skin, it really, really just opens up. I wear this stuff all the time. I do wish there was an intense version or just something that smells similar that lasted a bit longer because I only get five to six hours longevity with, with soft projection, which is a huge shame because I feel like a fragrance like this, you want everyone to smell. But smell-wise, honestly, no, no flaws, no faults. Not everyone's going to love it, but I definitely do. Totally deserves to be on this list. And, you know, it used to be one of my favorite fragrances of all time for a good reason. At number 23 is a fragrance that I really, really like. I just don't think I'll ever quite love it, but it has to be on this list. 
and that is Initio Absolute Aphrodisiac, kind of a dirty animalic vanilla. I can see why women would love this on a man. It kind of has that addictive, just want to smell more type quality to it. I just find it doesn't perform well on me. I don't really connect with the fragrance. I do love my vanilla heavy babies like this one. There's just something about it that I'm just not really drawn to. I don't reach for it all that often. I, I, you know, I can see why people consider this a masterpiece. It is a lot of people's favorite Initio fragrance. However, there are a lot of vanilla heavy fragrances that I'll be talking about later in this video that I have ahead of it for one reason or another. I just find myself reaching towards them more. Definitely worth a try, just not my favorite in the world. Latafa Kamra, probably still to this day, the greatest clone fragrance of all time in my honest opinion. Does it smell like Angel Share? Kind of. I would say it's around 60% similar. The date, kind of praline, the denseness, the richness, I actually think it's done better than Angel Share. I also like how it's a touch less boozy and kind of has a more cinnamon Christmassy vibe to it. I wear this thing all the time. It performs well. It's one of the very few clones in my collection that I wear. I tend to stay away from clones and I do prefer wearing the real thing. However, as long as Latafa Kamra is around, I don't think I'll even see myself getting angel share this thing is just that good at number 21 is bdk gris chanel edp i do own gris chanel x straight and although i have tossed back and forth which one i like more i reach for gris chanel edp more it's just more versatile it's fresher it's not quite as masculine there's just something easier to wear about it i like the freshness but they are honestly quite similar gris chanel edp oh gris chanel x straight is just kind of a darker almost like chai latte type of scent. This one I could see as an all year round signature, maybe more for a woman. However, I still do find myself wearing this one quite a lot. There's not much for me to say about it. I don't love it. However, I really enjoy it. And yeah, definitely deserves to be on this list. BDK is a great brand. And honestly, this is 100% worth a try. We have officially made it to the top 20. And at number 20, we have Tom Ford Tobacco Vinny. A lot of you might've expected this one to be higher. However, in the past three, four, five weeks, I think I've only worn this one once. Although I do really like the smell, it's just a little bit too spicy for the, what I'm going for at the moment. It definitely reminds me of kind of a spice cabinet with a little bit of vanilla to make it more subtle. However, I just haven't really been reaching for my spicy fragrances. And this one is definitely spicy. It is also very overpriced for what you are getting. 50 mil, this was like 400 Aussie dollars, which is just criminal no matter how good it smells that is always just going to be criminal tom ford's a hit or miss try them all i think a lot of them are just more fun to kind of look at and smell in store rather than actually buy if you really like the smell of one and they are also very very likely that there are many great dupes available of it for like 50 bucks so keep that in mind at number 19 we have the last valentino on this list and that is green extravaganza now this one gets a lot of hate online I just don't understand it. I think the coffee note is unique. It's done well. It's their opening. It's there in the dry down. Performance isn't fantastic like a lot of Valentinos, but this, there's just something so incredibly addictive about it. Although it has that coffee note, I wouldn't say it's fall and winter orientated. I, I could see myself wearing this on a hot summer day as well. All year round signature scent, green extravaganza. Also, if you're a woman watching this, green extravaganza Donna, the woman's version, is just as good, if not better, than the men's version. Also, just take a look at that bottle. I'm, I don't think I've ever seen something as pretty as this bottle. At number 18, Parfums de Mali Leighton, a classic, a legendary niche fragrance for a reason. Probably the most popular men's niche fragrance of all time alongside Creed Aventus. Apple, it's kind of an apple pie, almost gourmand vibe to it. However, it does have enough freshness where you could use this during the spring, even the summer, just with less sprays. Amazing all year round signature for kind of a classy, wealthy, sophisticated gentleman. Also, if you're a young guy looking to get into your first niche and essentially you want to smell wealthier than you actually are, this could be a great option as well. Next, we have Jean Paul Gaultier Paradise Gardens. A lot of you will probably think this is ridiculous having it this high up or even including this on the list at all. But look how much I've used. Yes, I do sell fragrance samples. However, I reach for this thing at least once a week. And when you own this many bubbles of fragrances, that is an impressive feat. There's something addictive. There's something so uplifting with that coconut opening. It's blended really well. Honestly, Jean-Paul Gaultier, you hit it out of the park with this release. I love Paradise Gardens and I will probably always have a bottle of this in my collection. Up next, we have Bond Number no. 9, New York Nights. Full disclosure, I was gifted this by Bond Number no. 9 around a month ago. However, this has been on my wish list for a long time. Peanut butter, 
kind of caramelly banana bread type scent with this. I'm not really sure how else to describe it. To me, it smells almost identical to the smell of freshly baked banana bread. And if you freaking love that smell as much as I do, you will know why this is so high up on this top 30. It is so addictive. I can see a woman wearing this, a man wearing this, perfect for the fall and winter time, going out, being a real attention grabber because of how unique it smells. Honestly, this is one of the few niche fragrances that I would say is 100% worth the very high price tag. We have finally made it to the halfway point, and I want to start off this halfway point with a very controversial pick, Dior Sauvage EDP. Man, this thing, you know, any anytime Sauvage is brought up, it's going to bring up a lot of mixed reactions. Personally, you either love it or hate it. I love it. I freaking love it. I don't wear it that much, but I can see why it got so popular. It doesn't deserve all the hate. Even though a lot of, you know, toxic ex-boyfriends wear this, who cares? Magnetic cap, pressurized atomizer, Dior, you've, you've made a masterpiece, a timeless classic. People are going to be wearing Sauvage in 50, 60, 70 years. And I think that just speaks to how good it is. Versatile, compliment puller. You know, if you're watching this video in 2050, I would still recommend you to go and get Savage right now. Because I'm guessing they're still selling it, and it's still selling millions each year. At number 14, we have a lesser known brand based off chess pieces, and this is the brand Mind Games. This one is called French Defense. Another full disclosure, this was sent to me by the brand as well. But it's on this list for a reason, I'm not getting paid to promote any of these fragrances in this video. This is one of the only masculine cherry fragrances that I've even smelt. And they've just done it so right. The cherry is just so realistic. It's so sweet, so juicy. If you love the smell of cherry and you have 500 bucks sitting around, get Mind Games French Defense and then thank me after. At number 13, we have what I think is the best Versace fragrance of all time, Eros Flame. I own the original Eros and Eros EDP. They just don't come close to how good this is because you get that addictive Eros vanillary fresh DNA that everyone loves, but then you add some citrusy, a little bit of spiciness, makes it more complex. I don't imagine this would get as many compliments as the original Eros. There aren't many fragrances that would, but I just think from a perfume enthusiast standpoint, you will love this stuff more than the original. And I think you should buy this one instead. At number 12, we have one of the last designer fragrances on this list, and that is Le Mail Le Parfum. Why do I even start with this fragrance? It is so good. Addictive, Jean-Paul Gaultier, mass appealing, vanilla lavender DNA, but then you add a powdery iris to give it some classiness. To me, this is the perfect men's, young man's date night fragrance. Next, we have a brand that you might have not heard of before, and that is the brand City Rhythm. This one is called City Rhythm Miami. They base scents off different cities. So obviously, this one is based off Miami. I've never been to Miami. I don't know if this smells close to what Miami smells like, but... Pina Colada, tropical, some rum in there, which is really interesting. Imagine Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Beau Le Parfum, but if it was more, if it was made niche, so it has niche quality to it, better performance, better blend, more unique smell. You do definitely pay a high price, but in my opinion, from all these City Rhythm fragrances that I've tried, you get your money's worth every single time. Also, the liquid has this beautiful shimmer to it. Definitely just go check it out. Niles, the owner, he's an amazing guy. It's just a super cool brand that I think we should be supporting. We have made it to the top 10. I never thought we would get here. I'm kicking it off with the top 10 is a super strong one. Mansera Omori Cafe, the best Mansera fragrance by far in my opinion. They need to bring this to Australia though. What are you doing, Mansera? This would sell numbers for you guys. I had to pick this up in London and look how much I have already used. Already one of the most complimented fragrances in my collection. Why? The performance is beast mode. You get coffee, caramel, ice cream. It's definitely an attention grabber. If you want everyone smelling you and you just want to smell like a sweet, sexy ice cream, get this fragrance and you will not be disappointed. At the number nine spot, the first Zerzhov fragrance on this list, and that is Starlight. This one is 100% worth the money. It is one of the more expensive Zerzhov offerings that they have, but honestly, it smells like Christmas time in a bottle. The cardamom opening is next level. If you want to know what a really high quality cardamom note smells like, smell Zerzhov Starlight. I still remember when I first smelled this on a tester strip, I almost bought it retail price right there in the store, which is something that I never consider. It's just this good. While we are on the topics topic of Zerzhov, let's move on to another Zerzhov, and that is their bestseller, Naxos. If you were into fragrances for any amount of time, you would have heard of this fragrance. You've probably smelt it before. Honey, tobacco, lavender. This was the first niche fragrance that I ever smelt, and I bought it pretty soon after I got a sample of it. It's addictive. 
you smell wealthier than you actually are wearing this fragrance. It reminds me of a very, very rich man, and who doesn't want to smell like that? We have the last design of fragrance on this top 30 list, and at number 7, it is no other then Stronger With You Intensely, the fragrance that blew me up on Fragrance TikTok. The fragrance that essentially kickstarted my fragrance journey, and to this day, I still wear it all the time on nights out. Even now, having all these niche fragrances, there is just something about Intensely, the way the vanilla is done, the toffee, it is so good. And it pulled compliments almost every time I wear it, which is something I can't say about the majority of fragrances in my collection. I'm so glad Armani decided to undiscontinue this. It is a gem that should be sold for many, many more years. Making its way to number six is another vanilla heavy fragrance, but not vanilla heavy in a way similar to Strong With You Intensely. It is Altair. This one is more airy than Strong With You Intensely. It's a little bit less dense. It definitely has a more freshness to it. It's got a slight orange tinge. Kind of reminds me of like an orange creamsicle ice cream or lolly. Really, really good. I do find myself reaching for this more than Strong With You Intensely. Performs a little bit better on my skin. Smells a little bit better, you know, more blended. It smells a little bit better blended than Strong With You Intensely. That's what I meant to say. Obviously, it costs a lot more. I think it is worth it if you love vanilla, mass appealing fragrances, but you want a little bit of a niche quality to it. Check out Altair. This one really grew on me. I love this stuff. We have officially made it to the top five. This is exciting stuff. We have got Roja Manhattan. Full disclosure again, this one was gifted to me by a distributor of Roja. But man, it is just the most calming, the most peaceful, the most unique fragrance I've ever smelled. Every time I wear this, I discover something new about it. I'm like, that smells like a note that last time I wore it, I didn't pick that up. So good. Performance for how much you're paying, honestly, is disappointing. But if you want a subtle, mature, classy, complex, it's just so good. It's such a good fragrance, man. I'm not 100% sure of the notes. I don't really remember. It's just the blend is so good that you can't even pick out individual notes. Um, you might be thinking that's a bad thing, but not in this case. At number four, we have the best parfum Somali fragrance of all time. And that is Ojan. I have both the uh, reformulated version and the old version with the gold cap. Let me just clear this up by saying I believe to be no different between the two. Some people are saying that the old batches perform better. I have not noticed that. It smells like you just walked into a freshly... It smells like you walked into a brand new bakery that has just opened. They've got all the croissants in the front. You're getting wafts of cinnamon scrolls. It is a pure gourmand. If you really like your sweet, realistic gourmand scents and you love the smell of cinnamon and you want to smell like that, get Ojan right now. We have officially made it. Dramatic drum roll, please. To the top three on this list. At number three, we have MFK's Grand Soir. And at number two, we have MFK's Oud, Sad and Mood. These used to be my number one and my number two babies for a long time. However, I have found something that I think slightly edges them out. Try and guess it in the comments right now. I don't think you'll guess it, but you can try. Oud, Sad and Mood, I, I reach for more than Grand Soir. It's just a little bit easier to wear. It smells like a Turkish delight, one of my favorite treats when I was a kid. And then Grand Soir, man, where do I even start with this? It's just vanilla and amber, but the blend is so beautiful. You can tell the ingredients are high quality. It smells like a rich London man wearing a suit at night. That is the best way to describe Grand Soir. Both of these, if you're into fragrances, you need to go try them. And at the number one spot, have you guessed it? Probably not. It is another fragrance from Mind Games, and this one is called Queening. Now, yes, this one was also gifted to me. However, it is myself, my brother's, and my dad's favorite fragrance in my entire collection. Do you know the odds of that? Do you know what the odds of that are? One in like 500, probably. The reason we all love this one is because it is the best vanilla fragrance I've ever smelled. Now it's got other notes. It's got rum, it's got coconut. However, I don't pick up on those. The blend is just so well done. It just smells like the most gorgeous, rich, perfectly unisex, powdery vanilla I've ever put my nose to. If you like vanilla in your fragrances and you're a woman watching this, you're a dude watching this, I don't know, just get your hands on this, please. I know that it is expensive. And if you're in Australia, I still don't think you can buy them. However, if you're in the US watching this, try and get your hands on at least a sample of Mind Games. Cleaning more people need to find out about this fragrance and the brand as a whole. Again, I'm just going to uh, affirm the fact that I'm not getting paid a cent from Mind Games to talk about their fragrance in this video. I just genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, this fragrance is just next level.
that is going to wrap it up on ranking the 30 best or my 30 favorite fragrances out of my entire 120 bottle collection. This video took a long, long time. My editor has a long job ahead of him. So make sure to like, subscribe, tick the bell. It is completely free, but it helps me out a ton. I really hope you guys love the video. Have a blessed rest of your day.